I will be reading from Exodus, the 17th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 7. And from the New Revised Standard Version, the Bible says this, From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water there for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried unto the Lord, What shall I do for this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? That was the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And God provided. And God provided. Can I move away from this a little bit? There we go. Rain always makes me feel good. At least the light rains that seem to seep into the earth slowly. And after they're finished, there's like green everywhere. Now, my husband, Ralph, installed rain barrels on our property several months ago. And we've got two 55-gallon rain barrels. That's a lot of water, right? On one side of the house. And that takes the runoff water from the roof, from the gutters, the driveway, and the condensate from the air conditioning unit. It's a lot of water. Then we have another 55-gallon rain barrel on the other side of the house that takes the runoff from the gutters. And we have hoses attached to the rain barrels running downhill so we can water our gardens with this water. Water is an important resource. And in Huntsville, our water prices, have you heard this, are going to be increasing by 35% after the first of the year. I, I heard that. Oh, it's terrible. This is going to present a hardship for a lot of people. Charging for water use. I think the ancient people would have been appalled at this suggestion. Water as a commodity to be leveraged for the best price. Native Americans in the ancient world viewed water as holy, as sanctified. For most indigenous people, water has an honored and indispensable place, an actual energy or power, as well as being symbolic of life and death, creation, nourishment, Water exists as an independent, self-sufficient, and somewhat primeval element to be encountered with humility, respect, joy, and caution. Water is often seen as a spirit. The ancient Israelites also viewed water with the utmost respect. It was a very, very precious commodity to them as well. The lack of rain in certain areas where they lived made catching the water, catching rainwater, something which was really important to their survival. I would imagine they developed modified rain barrels so they could catch the water to use. There's a commonality between the ancient nomadic native peoples and the ancient Israelites. They both believed in some way that the spirit was in water. And God confirms this. In the book of Jeremiah, God is passing judgment on his people. And when God refers to God's self, God uses the language living water. Listen. Has a nation changed gods? Were they not gods? When, but my people have exchanged their glory for that which is of no benefit. Be appalled at this, you heavens, and shudder. Be very desolate, declares the Lord. 
for my people have committed two evils. They've abandoned me, the fountain of living waters, to carve out for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that do not hold water, broken rain barrels, other gods. We're more accustomed to hearing the New Testament language in reference to Jesus saying this, John 7. On the final and climactic day of the feast, Jesus took his stand. He cried out, If anyone thirsts, let them come to me and drink. Rivers of living water will brim and spill out the depths of anyone who believes in me this way, just as the scripture says. Water fuels our bodies. It's a physical necessity, but water is more than just sustenance for our bodies. Water lies at the very heart of understanding God. Our biblical narrative in Genesis, Genesis says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters, and God said, that there be space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. And God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heaven, and God called this space sky. Then God said, let the waters swarm with life. Water is ancient. From the beginning of the earth, it has meaning related to purification, cleansing and life-giving. God provides sustaining water. And the scripture we read today of the Israelites' escape from Egypt shows us how God provides with a rock and a stick, even though they grumbled and harumphed a lot. God provided for them. Living water. Do you know that water is mentioned a total of 722 times in the Bible? 722 times, more often than faith, hope, prayer, and worship. Water is important. 70 to 75% of the earth's surface is covered with water. Roughly 70% of an adult's body is made up of water. And about 85% of the adult brain is made up of water. Water connects us to all living things. Water circulates through the earth and the water cycle through the rains in the sky to the rivers connecting to the sea is life-sustaining and ancient. Water contains parts of us. A drop of dew could contain water molecules that fed Jesus or fed the dinosaurs. A drop of dew because of the constant cycle. That's amazing. Water is essential to life. All living things need water to survive. But as humans of today, are we forgetting how important water is? Do we as God's children sometimes take this gift, this gift of water, for granted? We can turn on a faucet, right? And water's right there. Yet in other parts of the world, that's not necessarily the case. Here are 17 countries listed in the category of suffering from extremely high baseline water stress. Not enough water. 17 countries. Qatar, Israel, Lebanon, Iran, Jordan, Libya, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Eritrea, United Arab Emirates, San Marino, Bahrain, India, Pakistan, Turkmenistan, Oman, and Botswana. 12 of these countries are located in the Middle East and North Africa due to their desert climate and also their growing water demand. But what about here in the United States? Do you know that right here in the USA, the Navajo Nation of New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona have no access to running water? The Navajo Nation. And according to water accessibility nonprofit Dig Deep, as of March 17, 2023, they estimate that there are 2.2 million people in the US without running water inside their homes. 2.2 million. No sinks, tubs, bathtubs, toilets. An additional 44 million Americans may have indoor plumbing, but their water systems have been in violation of the Safe Water Drinking Act. Think Flint, Michigan. Oh my goodness. People need water and people need God. 
When I'm feeling dry in my soul, dry in my creativity and not connected to life around me, I go to a body of water. I get more from water than just something to drink. Can any of you right now think of a time when you felt the presence of God in and around water? Think about it for a minute. Felt the presence of God in and around water. Okay, raise your hand if you have felt that before. So quite a few people. Okay, let's answer the question together. Why do you think we feel, some of us feel, the presence of God more by water? Be because it's what he's created? Yes, you're sitting on a lake, it's like huge, right? He made that. Look at the Great Lakes. Oh my gosh, you can't see the other side. When Ralph first brought me to the Great Lakes on our honeymoon, I mean, he practically had to sit me down on the ground because I was in such shock. I'm like, you can't see. Like, he said, no, this is the Great Lakes. Not like a little lake in Maine. This is the Great Lakes, okay? Why else do we feel disconnected? I, do you think, um, we feel the presence of God, I'm sorry, in water. Say it again. It's calming. When I'm out, yeah, when you're stressed out. Yes. Presence of water is calming. I think, don't you think hearing the waves calms your heart, even your heart rate? Very much. Me too. Okay, so the calming effect of water. Why else might we feel the presence of God in water? water? We were born in water. That's true. We come from a water sack, right? Mm -hmm. Very true. Absolutely. And I used to deliver babies, and I can tell you that there was a lot of water. Yes. Niagara Falls. Just, it's, God, the house. it's God. It's magnificence of it. I've never seen Niagara Falls. Is it really that? Well, like, it really? The Canadian side. The Canadian side is okay. <laughs> you went to the Canadian side, okay? But the the presence of God, because it was so grand. Any other reasons why we feel the presence of God in water? Rejuvenating. It is right. Do you think getting in it makes a difference, or do you can just stand next to it? Standing by a running stream. Standing by a running stream, yeah. And you can see life almost, can't you? Very interesting, yeah. Very interesting. Anything else? Maybe solitude. Solitude. Being just with the water, Being just with the water right? And ha feeling that presence of God. Did you have one, Tom? Uh huh. When they, when you have the water, and it's explosive. Explosive. Oh yes, big water, hurricanes and things. Right. You see the power of God. You see the power of God. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. The explosive power of God. Right. The big power of God and hurricanes. Oh my goodness. And even you know, if you're standing on the shore and you see the splash of the waves that come up, it's crazy. And it can be really, really big and overwhelming, can it? that crazy water. You're right, you do feel the presence of God in that sometimes. I think you're absolutely right. And it's always made me feel, I think, calmer too. Absolutely. Um, many people, I think listening to you, do feel that water can be sacred and spiritual and we can feel the presence of God in and around water and that is wonderful. Yet it seems to me, after what I just heard, that if it's so wonderful, if our need for water if our need for water is if our need for water is physically and spiritually important. Interesting, we didn't say, I just thought of that. We didn't say our connection to water as physical. We don't feel God in the water. Except Kathy, you did, right? We feel God because we came from that, right? But if it is spiritual and physical and our need for water is really great we don't often think as much about our water usage and isn't water sacred enough to conserve I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. Hey, Carol, ooh, 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 ooh. What's taking so long? You've been in the shower forever. Oh, come on, I'm just adding a little extra suds, you know? It smells really good in here. Ooh, doo, well, the water doo, doo, doo. tank will be empty soon, sis. You've been in the shower for at least 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. Okay. Carol, what is taking you so long? We've got to get to Mom 
mom and dad's before the food gets ruined in the heat. I'm just brushing my teeth. I'll be here just a minute. Why do I hear the water running? Don't you turn off the faucet while you're brushing? Oops. I'm sorry. Oh. What's that noise? Oh my gosh, is that the sprinkler system? I left the windows of the car open because you were taking so long and the food was getting hot. Everything's going to get soaked. Well, I sort of washed the car this morning and there were suds all over the driveway. So I just turned on the sprinkler system thinking it would just wash it away. You watered the entire yard on a 20 minute cycle so that a bit of soap could wash the driveway? Oh sis, when we get back from the mom and dad's, we need to have a serious talk about water conservation. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me read something to you that has inspired me. It's a prayer. It helps me think of other people besides myself that view water as sacred and life-giving and of God. For us, we just turn on a faucet and water is there. Yeah. For others, it might not be like that. Let me read this simple, simple prayer to you. Okay. God of life, who we seek through your living water, you are God to all. You are... <coughs> God of all those who have no running water in their homes. God of all who have no toilets, no sinks, no faucets, and no showers. God of all those who walk miles for water and then miles to return home with their heavy loads. God of those whose only supply of water is contaminated, bringing death, not life. God of living water. May water cleaned and, life, and be life-giving be available to every living creature. May we learn and understand the value of your hand in our creation and the sacredness of all that you have so lovingly provided. May we use less and save more, share more and hoard less. May that vision to protect what you have lovingly given us move forward. Sacred God, maker of heaven and earth, may your people be thankful and respectful of all that you have provided. Amen. Thank you, sis.